Hey, I'm Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple and this video is about queen cells, specifically what to do when you see one in your hive. So I am all about trying to simplify the process of keeping bees so that you, the beekeeper, are more confident in the decisions you make and, and what you should be doing to help your bees thrive and be healthy. So for this video, I have a PDF that goes along with it. You check out the link right here at my website, beekeepingmadesimple.com slash blog and you can download the PDF that goes with this. And what I call this is a choose your own adventure chart because there are different steps you take when you find a queen cell in your hive, depending on what's going on in your hive. And so the process can be different for each person. Now, of course, you have to use a little bit of that beekeeper intuition. You might think you don't have it yet, but you do because you have logic and you are a human being with a brain and you have a general idea of what's going on in your hive based off of how the bees are acting towards you, how they might be a little bit different from what you're used to. So also go with that instinct, but this is for the most part going to help guide you to make the right decision when you see a queen cell in your hive. So what I'm gonna do is first real fast, explain what a queen cell is and what it looks like. I'm also going to talk about reasons why a hive makes queens and why you would see a queen cell in your hive. I'm going to talk about what to do with your hive and if you see a queen cell and go through the choose your own adventure chart that I've made for you. I'm also going to talk about what not to do which is very very important because you do not want to harm a potential queen bee that's growing inside your hive unintentionally and make her not be a uh, viable queen in your hive. So first of all, what does a queen cell look like and what is a queen cell? A queen cell is a cell that a queen bee is going to be hatching from. Queen cells, worker bee cells, and drone cells are where the bees develop, which we call the, the brood, before they hatch as a fully grown adult bee ready to do their job within the hive. Worker bee cells, drone cells, and queen cells are all different sizes and will look different. The worker bee cells are the ones that you are probably used to seeing and they are the majority of the brood you're going to be seeing in the hives. However, you will see some drone cells and occasionally the queen bee cell. The queen bee cell looks incredibly different from the worker bees and the drones in that they build this cell off of the comb so that the queen is hanging on her head on off of the comb. It almost looks like a peanut shell, but a lot smaller. They're usually, once finally developed and capped, you're looking at less than an inch in height and maybe three eighths of an inch ish uh, wide. They look like this. However, they can vary a little bit in their shape and their size, and they will be throughout the beehive. It's also important to realize that not all queen cells have something in them. I will often see queen cells that are empty within the hive. Now they don't have a capping, they will be open with a hole and I call them the practice queen cells. Uh, a queen might be coming around and laying in it when it is time for the hive to swarm or they might just be making them for who knows what reason. But either way, it is very common to see these practice queen cells within your beehive. And they are nothing to be alarmed about. It doesn't necessarily mean your hive is going to swarm or they are preparing to swarm or that they did swarm. So real fast, what you don't wanna do if you see queen cells in your hive, very, very, very important. Something a woman that had a queen breeding business for decades in Florida told me about casually thinking I knew this and that everyone knew this, but no one had ever mentioned it to me, was to not hold your frame upside down when a frame has queen cells on it. And what do I mean by don't hold your frame upside down? Well, usually you're pulling your frame out like this and holding it by the ear, but then it is common to turn the frame upside down to look at the other side and that can make your queen not viable anymore. You do not want to turn your frame upside down. Other thing you do not want to do is squish all your queen cells. 
don't do it. It is when I was first in my first couple years of beekeeping. That's what I heard a lot at the bee clubs. I saw queen cells in my hive. I thought they were going to swarm. So I just squished all the queen cells to stop swarming. That is a beginner mistake. Do not squish all your queen cells. One reason being you really want to examine the entire hive, close it up and think about what you're going to do before you just make a rash decision like kill all your queen cells. Two, your bees might have already swarmed or they are going to swarm shortly. And so if you kill all your queen cells, you are leaving your hive totally queenless. <laughs> and that is not good. If you cannot find a queen um, to, to buy from someone, you might have just signed a death certificate for this hive. Another thing is that if the hive made one queen cell, they can make another one. <laughs> So squishing all the queen cells doesn't mean they're not gonna make more later on. And there's also a good chance that you didn't see them all because queen cells are very obvious when they're capped. Um, by day seven, they're looking about like this and they are fairly large. However, when they are just, um, you know, day three or four and not an egg anymore and just starting to get into the larva stage, those queen cells are very small. They are just starting to be built and you are probably not going to notice them. So squish all the queen cells you want. It's probably not going to help prevent anything you don't want to prevent, but it could cause some problems down the road for you. It's important to know the timeline for queen cells so that you can have a better idea of the age of it. So the queen uh, lays an egg and that is day one. That egg is an egg for two days and then on the third day it will hatch into a larva. At this point you're not going to notice that this is potentially going to be a queen. Um, but on day seven it will be considerably larger and that is a time that you should be able to recognize queen cells. On day nine is usually when it is fully capped and you will not be able to see inside the queen cell 14 to 16 is when you should expect them to hatch. Keep in mind that if all of your queen cells are in the hive, the first queen that hatches is going to go around and find all the queens that have not hatched yet and she will try to kill them. <laughs> so if you are hoping to take some queen cells out and make some splits and use these queen cells in other hives, do it well before day 14 so that you do not have a whole bunch of dead queens in your hive. Now, if your queen cell is open, but you're seeing like a little door <laughs> where it was chewed open and that bottom flap is hanging down or the bottom of the queen cell looks chewed up, then that often means that the queen hatched already and the bees haven't gotten around to chewing up the cell and getting rid of it. Next, let's talk about the reasons why a hive makes a queen or why you might be seeing a queen cell in your hive. One reason why you would see a queen cell in your hive is because there is no queen in your hive and she may have flown away, usually during an inspection when she was on a frame that you were holding up and she took off and didn't make her way successfully back to her hive or she died. And when a queen dies, this often is caused by the beekeeper unintentionally squishing her or something when inspecting the hive. But it is something that happens where the hive will kill their queen and make a new one. And this is often when you have an older queen or a queen that is not really producing at the level that the hive wants her to. So in that case, they will ball her, which means they will collectively circle around her, vibrate their flight muscles just like they do when they are um, producing heat in that winter cluster and they will essentially cook her to death. I don't know what's worse being killed by one of your daughters who has been the no, named assassin to come kill you or to collectively be killed by thousands of your children <laughs> that they have all decided to come in and, and kill you that day. I think I'd prefer the one the one assassin than all of them but you know Luckily, I'm not a bee. The other time that you, you will see queen cells in the hive is when there is still a queen in the hive and the bees are getting ready to swarm. Okay, so let's get started. You are seeing queen cells in your hive. What to do? Well, first go download the choose your own adventure chart so that you can follow along with me. And the first step 
is to see if there is an egg or larva inside the queen cell. If the queen cell is kept and it is a light yellow, yellow, orange, fairly light color, does not look like it's from old wax, then there's probably a queen pupating inside there. If you look inside the queen cell and it is empty, then it is an empty queen cell. If no, this queen cell is empty and you're not seeing anything in there, then that's good news. There's probably nothing to worry about. You just wanna do a quick inspection like you would normally to make sure that there is eggs and young larvae within the hive. You do not have to find the queen and you'll, you'll see in this chart that is, I'm not really telling you to find the queen because it doesn't really matter if you see the queen. That will not tell you whether you have an active laying queen and a healthy hive and it won't tell you really all that much about what's going on in your hive so if you're seeing eggs and larvae in the hive great you're done close it up false alarm there is nothing to worry about if there is something inside this cell an egg a larva um or it's capped and it is uh not a really old looking cell but one that looks healthy then it sounds like the bees are looking to make a queen the next step is to see if there is a queen currently laying in your hive so for this you have to look for eggs now a trick to looking for eggs one is if you have black foundation that's helpful if you don't use any foundation holding it up to the sun so that you can see through the cells is helpful another thing you can do is i mean because those things are things you would have done weeks ago so right now while you're in the thick of it one thing that's helpful is to look for larvae if you don't see any eggs or if you have trouble seeing eggs because the way the queen lays is she will start laying somewhere and she will lay in the spiral pattern so that she gets every single cell she's not walking around and laying here and there and everywhere if she is that is what we call a spotty laying pattern and a, a sign that you may have an unhealthy queen so most likely what the queen is doing is laying in the spiral pattern um, so if you have large larva in one section of your frame next to that large larva is going to be smaller larva next to that smaller larva will be really small larva almost to the point you can't see it all you might see is a small shine in the cell because there's that larva is floating in a pool of royal jelly next to that really small larva will be eggs if you also see the queen and she's looking like normal queen size then that's also great too look on the frame that she is on that you just pulled out because there's a good chance that there are eggs on that frame that she was on so if you do not see the queen anywhere within the hive and you are not seeing any eggs or small larva after a thorough inspection of every single frame then it sounds like your hive is queenless either your hive swarmed already and they have a queen that's going to be hatching or she was killed by the bees or the beekeeper either way you do not have a queen in your hive and you have some queen cells hatching so the next step is to figure out whether you want these queens to hatch and the primary question you're asking yourself is is this a hive with good genetics that i want to breed from or should i use this hive as a way to bring new genetics into my apiary so a big part of beekeeping is building an apiary with strong genetics. So if this does have good genetics, and what I mean by good genetics is that they are active. They're bringing in honey. They are building comb. They have a good population. And most importantly, they are doing, dealing with Varroa mites on their own fairly well, or better than the other hives in your apiary. Um, then this would be a hive that you would want to breed from. Now, whether or not they are happy or, or calm uh, when you're opening the hive is um, that is a trait that is up to the beekeeper, whether they want to breed or not. If the hive has genetics that you like that are considered beneficial to the bees, then leave the hive alone. <laughs> you are going to let the queen cells hatch and let them figure things out and go on her mating flight and start laying. So what you want to do is... First off, before you close up the hive, or if you have already, 
go back to the hive and really fast remove excess honey. Now this isn't as much a problem in areas that do not have uh, small hive beetles or a really high small hive beetle infestation. However, in areas like where I am here in Hawaii, small hive beetles are very, very bad. And so you do not want to let this hive's population go down and have all of this honey on the hive or else it is a good chance that the hive is going to get a small hive beetle infestation. Um, so in general, you want to have about two frames of honey for every four to six frames of brood. Uh, and you can take the excess off. You can leave a little bit extra on if it's just, you know, filling up your two brood boxes, but you do not want a full honey super on top of your hive. So what are you going to do with this honey? Well, if you have a strong hive with a high population that can handle the extra honey, put it on that hive. You can stick them in the refrigerator standing up i've done that many times you can put them in a freezer you can harvest them if it is excess honey that you are not storing for winter um, just don't leave them on the hive and then you want to close up the hive and do this as fast as you possibly can you do not want to harm the queen cells you don't want to cause uh, too much interference you want to close up the hive and leave it alone for three weeks leave it alone for three weeks this is very important because the queen is going to be hatching and she is going to go on her mating flight and when she goes on her mating flight she is leaving the hive and flying for the first time and she has to mate and then come back to her home when she is mating she is being chased by all of these males they call it they say it looks like a comet's tail uh, just trying to catch up with her and mate with her I can imagine it is incredibly difficult to remember where you are and where you came from when you're flying for the first time you're being chased by dozens of males <laughs> trying to mate with you and then you have to go back home if she goes to the wrong hive, they will kill her so she wants to go to the right house now if that house is being opened at that time uh, because the beekeeper is checking in that house isn't going to look like the house she left and she is going to probably go to the hive next door and be killed. So leave it alone. Now, what are the odds that in the two minutes that you go to open the hive to check on that extra honey and make sure that it's okay, that she's flying around? You know, if I was a mathematician, I'd probably say the, the odds are low, but as a beekeeper, the odds are high. <laughs> Whenever you don't want them to do something, whenever you don't want something to happen while you're out in the beehive, that's when it happens. So just don't do it. Leave that hive alone. Now here is the chart again for the queen bee. And I have a download at that same blog post where you can download this chart as well. So you can see if you opened the hive, the last time you opened it, the cell was capped, then you know that cell was already at least seven, it was at least already nine days old. And so you know that around about when that queen was hatching and she's going to then mate in a few days. But you want to give her at least three or four days to do her mating. Um, it's going to be a few days before she leaves the hive and then a day or two for her to mate. And you want to leave her alone. And then it's going to be a few days as she's walking around before she might start laying eggs. And you really just don't want to disturb the hive. After three weeks of spotting those queen cells, you are going to open your hive and you're going to look for a queen or eggs uh, or very young larva. If you see that, great. If you see eggs or young larva, great, perfect. You don't have to find the queen. Your queen hatched, she made it, she is doing her job, leave it alone. Check on her in a week or two during your next normal inspection and treat that hive as you would any other hive in your apiary. If you see a queen, but you're not seeing any eggs yet, um, then or young larva, then you want to close up the hive and give her another week before you check on her again. You really want to give her another two weeks from that first time you checked on her. So uh, five weeks total from when you saw those queen cells before you start to worry about whether this queen is viable and whether she will start laying or not. And also keep in mind that when you are looking for your eggs, that 
they're going to be, the laying pattern is going to be spotty at first. She could be laying anywhere within the hive and it's going to be maybe a couple eggs in one cell, a couple eggs in another cell, empty cells and then another egg because she's just starting to lay and so it's not going to be perfect at first and it's not going to be in that spiral pattern so it's going to be really difficult to spot you can also bring a flashlight to help you uh, spot those eggs but you really just want to give her a chance to um, really get going before you start to worry about her now if there is still no eggs or young larva present after six or seven weeks that's when your hive probably did not successfully requeen. Most likely she probably went out on her mating flight and something happened and she did not get back. So you wanna just do a real quick check, real, not quick check, a thorough check to see if you see a queen anywhere in the hive. Uh, you want to especially look for something that might look like a queen, but smaller. She's gonna be shorter, but she will still have those hips. And I describe her bottom half as almost like a heart shape. Uh, for all queens but when they're younger they're a lot they look wider and shorter as opposed to that long heart-shaped bottom like uh, queen cells queens that are already laying um, so even if you see her if you're still seeing absolutely no eggs and no larva then she probably didn't successfully mate and the best thing to do is to pinch her which means you are chopping her head off and merge that hive with another hive within your apiary. When you do that, you're going to put all of the brood together in one box if there is any brood left. If not, then you just fill up the one box with the frames of bees on it. You're going to take another hive, take the lid off, put a layer of newspaper on top and put that box with the frames of bees over top of the newspaper and any extra frames you might have in the other supers or brood uh, boxes just shake the bees off um, and put them all into that one box and put the lid on top and after a few days the bees will chew through the newspaper actually i don't even think it takes 24 hours for them to chew through the newspaper and the highs will have been merged together um, now a common question is should i just buy a queen and put her in this hive now I usually say no to this. Not everyone listens to me and it's up to you to decide whether you want to take my advice or not. You can choose to buy a queen and put her in that hive. But the thing is, is that this hive has had no queen laying eggs now for over a month. And if you buy a queen, you're going to put her in the hive. It's going to be three or four days before she's released might be a few days before she starts laying and even when she does start laying those first eggs are going to go 28 days before they hatch most hives do not have enough population to handle um, the hive going so long without brood hatching. You can give them frames from other hives. If you have other hives in your apiary that are strong, that have high population, that maybe you are going to split or something, um, you can give them frames of brood, but you don't wanna really do it at this stage in the process. Cause what's gonna happen is your hive's population is so low that they are not gonna be able to help this brood. And once this brood hatches, they're going to starve to death while hatching because they didn't have anyone to feed them when they were hatching. So if you wanna keep this hive going and you wanna give them a bought queen, then when you open up that hive at three weeks um, and you're not seeing anything, that's when you wanna throw a frame of capped brood into the hive. Uh, shake the bees off and put a frame of capped brood in the hive. Preferably bees that are going to, that are already hatching. Like if you see a frame with bees already coming out of the cells, that's a perfect frame. And put that in the hive at three weeks so that at six weeks, you're already feeding it extra brood. If you want, you can also throw in a frame of like older larva as well. And then at six weeks, you can give them another frame of bees uh, and this frame can have bees on it just make sure the queen's not on it and then you can also put your caged queen in and then you should have enough of a population that they can handle 
being um, having no eggs being laid for a while and no brood hatching for the next month. But this is just a, a tricky part where you really want to make sure that your population is fairly strong and can handle losing thousands of bees. Thousands of bees are going to be dying every day because they're older and there's no new bees to replace them that are hatching. And you cannot just throw a frame of brood into a hive with a low population because they will not be able to handle it. So I like to be a little bit, uh, I, I like to not bring in a queen that I'm just signing a death sentence for her, you know. Um, but it's really up to you to figure out what your hive situation is and whether they can handle um, a new queen or not. All right, now we're gonna backtrack. Go backwards again. If you do not see the queen anywhere within the hive and you are not seeing any eggs, then it sounds like your hive is queenless. But they do not have good genetics and you do not want to let those queen cells hatch because they're just like a meh hive all spring. They didn't really do much. They don't have much going on. So what you would wanna do is requeen. So what you do is you are going to pinch all of those queen cells you see. You take every single frame that has brood on it or had brood on it and you're going to shake it. What I mean by this is that you are going to go like this really hard so all the bees fly off your frame and into the beehive. Once you do that, you are going to look thoroughly on the frame for queen cells and just squish any of the cells that you see. You're going to do that for all of the frames in your brood boxes or that have brood on them and then you're going to close the hive up. Then you are going to look for where you can buy a queen. I do not recommend buying queens online and having them shipped to you. It's just, a, you can do it, but especially in the summertime with the high heat, it is very common for bees to arrive dead. So it is up to you whether you want to do that, but ideally you would find a local beekeeper that you can buy a queen from. It can be hard to find packages and nukes locally because um, that requires beekeepers to have their bees already up and running and to have requeened so that they have a new queen to sell you. But in the middle of summer, early summer, late spring, it should be fairly easy to find a beekeeper that can sell you a queen. Uh, you can just contact your local beekeeping association, contact the state beekeeping association, or just start calling the local apiaries in your area and asking them because even the places that buy packages from somewhere else probably have queens in the summertime. So you're gonna get that queen cage you're going to get that queen in her cage and you're going to go back out to your hive four days later if possible if it's later okay fine that's okay too when you're going to go you're going to want to go out there at least four days later and you're going to do the same thing you did before you are going to pick up every frame in these brood boxes shake the bees off and do a thorough inspection for a queen cell and make sure you look on the sides and at the bottom of the frame because that is a common place that they might hide and you're going to squish any additional queen cells that you see once you don't see any more queen cells in the hive then you're going to put your caged queen in the hive i have a uh, the part of my video on how to split a hive where i show how to put the caged queen into a hive it is right here here's the link and here's the timestamp, so you can go directly to that section what you want to do is put the caged queen in the hive and you do not want to remove the cork you do not want the bees to just release the queen whenever they can release her because they may or may not have accepted her yet uh so it it could be because there are still queen cells in the hive. If there are queen cells in the hive, they are not going to accept the caged queen. Um, if they are uh, still, I don't know, used to another queen's pheromones. I have seen many hives not get used to a caged queen within a few days. So leave her in, leave all the corks in, just put the cage in. And after four or five days, open up the hive pull out the cage and see how the bees are responding to the queen. What you're going to do is take a blade of grass or lightly blow on the cage and see if the bees get out of the way. If they do walk out of the way calmly, 
fly away and come back, then great, they've accepted her. If they are not, if they are biting at the cage, if they are buzzing loudly, um, they're not really moving off of the cage when you try to get them to, then that means they have not accepted her. So if they are nice towards the queen, you see their proboscis sticking out, like they're trying to feed her, then what you can do is the end with the cork that doesn't have the candy in it. You take a screw, you just screw it into that cork and pop out the cork, hold the cage way deep down inside the hive and let the queen walk out of the cage. When she's walked out of the cage, then you can close the hive up. If you're scared, you can just put the cage sitting down in the bottom of the hive. She will most likely just walk out on her own shortly, or you can put a teeny little bit of marshmallow in that hole and then put the cage in there and let her get out. The bees will eat through the marshmallow really fast. You just wanna go back there a couple days later and make sure sometimes they will just flood the cage and then she can't get out. So don't let that happen. You just wanna check and make sure that she successfully got out of the cage. If you're not sure, or the bees are still being aggressive towards her, then what you wanna do is leave her in the cage in the hive for another four days and then open it up again. Once you open it up again, what I like to do is bring a spray bottle full of sugar water syrup and a little bit of honeybee healthy. The sugar water is something that you make that you would feed your bees in the springtime or the fall. It's really, you're just heating up water and then adding some sugar. A one-to-one -one ratio of sugar to water is totally fine. If you have some other sugar water syrup in your fridge from the springtime, that's fine too. Add a little bit of Honey Bee Healthy uh, according to the directions that they have on their label. Put it in a spray bottle. When you open the hive, before you release the queen, what you want to do is just lightly spray all of the frames in that hive both sides. And then you release the queen and close it up. And what this will do, whether they are still aggressive to her or not, it should just get rid of whatever extra pheromones or scent is still in that hive so that the bees will accept the new queen. And there's only one time that that has ever happened to me, but spraying down the hives worked and the bees finally accepted her. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the beginning again. You have queen cells in your hive. There is a queen. You are seeing eggs or very young larvae in there. You might be seeing a queen, you might not, but if there are eggs, then there's probably still a queen in there. So that sounds like your hive is getting ready to swarm, but it has not yet. The best way to prevent swarming is to split your hive. And the way you do this is you take the queen and some frames of pupating bees and honey and you put them into another beehive. It can be right next to the current beehive. Check out my video, here's the link to it. Um, it's also in the video description below on how to do this. And this will prevent the bees from swarming because you essentially already swarmed them. And then you're going to let the current queen cells hatch and let the hive do their thing. If you really don't like the genetics, then go back to where we were originally, where you can requeen the hive manually yourself. If you do not want to split your beehive, or maybe you can't because you don't have the equipment for it, then there's a couple of options that you have. But keep in mind, the best thing to do to make sure that you don't lose any bees is to split your hive. Um, you can remove two to three frames of brood from each of your brood boxes so that you're giving room to your brood. So you're going to take these frames out and in its place, you're going to put empty frames of brood. No foundation, there can be wire or like a little popsicle stick at the top, but no foundation, no drawn out comb. So you want those empty frames in your brood section and you're going to put those frames of brood you're taking out into another beehive. If you cannot put it into another beehive, you call local beekeepers, contact your beekeeping association, ask if anyone wants to come by and take some frames of brood from you. It's essentially, I mean, there are lots of beekeepers out there that are struggling with a hive that is low in population that would appreciate these frames of brood. In exchange, they would give you empty frames so you're not losing money in this process. Or you can put them up above your hive. So you're going to have your brood boxes, you're gonna put your empty frames in there, you will have a queen excluder, you will have your honey supers above that, and then you're going to put another brood box on top of that with your frames. 
you also want to put out an interceptor if you can an interceptor you can buy them through beekeeping sites i even see them on amazon and what they do is they have the scent that mimics the scent um the bees release uh the scouts release so what you want is an interceptor to attract that swarm so that you just have a whole bunch of bees hanging from it that you can just tap the interceptor and have a large trash can down below the bees will fall inside it put a lid on it and go throw them back into a beehive so that if the bees still do swarm you know where they're at and you can hopefully grab them and put them back into your equipment that being said you're gonna to have to put them into equipment so it'll buy you some time but you still should be preparing to build a beehive or order one so that you have somewhere to put them you also want to pinch all the queen cells shake the frame get all the bees off the frame and pinch every single queen cell that you can find and then come back four days later shake all the frames and pinch all the queen cells again if you can't come back until the next weekend fine that's okay but you just want to keep on pinching the queen cells because you're going to miss them because there are small ones that you're not seeing are queen cells because the bees might be making more queen cells and just a quick heads up if you don't have beekeeping equipment and it might take you a while to order some or you don't want to spend more money on beekeeping equipment i mean i've been there i started beekeeping while on a beekeeper's I started my own apiary on a beekeeper salary, which was making, I think like $15 an hour. I was living in a studio apartment that was a shack that used to be the former queen breeding house of a beekeeper. Um, I had very little money to spend on this beekeeping venture that I was working on. I, my lids in a pinch you can go to a hardware store and three quarter inch plywood can be your lid and bottom board it you just you can have them cut it if you don't have the tools or the knowledge or want to cut them yourselves it's just a flat piece of wood and that is fine in the time for the time being now for the bottom board you're saying well how do the bees get in so you just drill a three quarter inch hole or an inch hole into your brood box and that is sufficient as an entrance it is what i have done here in hawaii where it gets really hot and where i have bees at higher in elevation where it's very humid very wet and the bees do a fine job fanning their hive and airing the hive and keeping moisture out and all of the stuff that bees need to do so all you're left with is the frames which you should always have extra frames laying around um you can put shallow frames into a deep box if it is the first deep box of your hive the boxes are now the tricky part i personally am not uh very handy but i do like to make things so i just bought a cheap table saw at the hardware store it was like 70 or 80 dollars it's not a full-size saw you can't put a dado blade in there but what i did was the rabbit joints which are really strong and the boxes with my rabbit joints have outlasted the ones with the finger joints um very easy to make and the hand holds are just two by fours that i put on the sides and the hand holds that are in most beekeeping boxes are actually really shallow and kind of hard to pick up a box especially if it's heavy so they're not ideal but they're great for commercial beekeepers because commercial beekeepers are often putting hives on trucks when they do that they do not want anything sticking off their boxes because then they can't fit as many hives on their truck. But as a hobby beekeeper, you're not putting your beehives on trucks. And even if you are, it's probably just gonna be a couple. And so having those hand holds off the side are going to be a lot easier for you to grip and also not going to cause any trouble. It's really just a commercial beekeeping thing. There are a lot of things that you might not even realize are, um, thing that everybody does but the reason why they're done that way is actually for commercial purposes and for the hobbies there's really no reason for why it needs to be done so i highly encourage you to try out making some of your boxes i mean for i think it was 12 dollars, i got an eight foot long piece of pine and that made me one and a half uh boxes 
not having enough equipment shouldn't really be something that holds you back too much when splitting your bees and i highly encourage you to expand your apiary whether you think you want to or not whether you think you're ready for it or not the fewer hives you have the harder beekeeping is i hope this video has helped you figure out how you can help your hive while they are in this process of making a new queen if you found this video helpful please like hit the subscribe button and the, the little bell icon if you want to be notified i put a video up I try to every weekend and go live the first Friday of the month. Check out my online beekeeping class at beekeepingmadesimple.com for uh, our online class where I offer mentorship and you're welcome to email me questions that you have, share photos, share videos, and I'm there to answer questions and help people out for as long as they need it for as many years as they want to. Um, it's really my way to give people mentorship that I always found difficult to find personally. If you're struggling as a beginner beekeeper to figure out what to do when you open your hive and how to help your bees, I have an inspection checklist, which is uh, my go-to for all beginners to go through every time you open a hive that will help you figure out what to do, what to look for, and how to know if there's something more that you need to do once you close your hive. I also have a uh, seasons PDF to help you figure out what you need to do throughout the year and how the beekeepers tasks change season to season. Thanks for watching. Bye.